Welcome to this YouTube channel called In Hope of Eternal Life. My name is Opio James and we are still on with our Revival and Reformation series and we glorify God for sustaining us up to this moment. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and in case you have any questions you can still drop them in the comment section. Without wasting time let's pray. Our dear beloved Heavenly Father we ask you to bless us today. Forgive us for where we have not done according to your will but manifest your love to us in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, our subject today is entitled The Plan of Redemption. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 is our memorial text. It says, She shall give birth to a son. He shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. And so friends, Christ's ministry is to save us from our sins. Friends, not in our sins. Many of us actually believe in this kind of you know, salvation where you are to be saved in your sins. And by the way, there is, when you look at the papal system, the papacy actually supplies two things. The devil himself supplies two things. Those that are saved by their works and those that are saved in their sins. They believe that as they can continue in their particular sins and in the end be saved. But friends, Christ's ministry or Christ himself actually saves us from our sins, not in our sins. Now, when you read Patriarchs and Prophets, page 595, we are told, in the beginning God created man in his own likeness. He endowed him with noble qualities. His mind was well balanced and all the powers of his being were harmonious. But the fall and his effects were perverted, have perverted his gifts. Sin has marred and well nigh obliterated the image of God in man. Friends, God himself created man perfect. But because of sin, you know, the, this image has, in one way or the other, been obliterated. And man was originally endowed with more, more noble powers and a well-balanced mind. He was perfect in his being and in harmony with his God. His thoughts were pure, his aims holy. But through disobedience, his powers were perverted and selfishness took the place of love. His nature became so weakened through transgression that it was impossible for him in his own strength to resist the power of evil. He was made captive by Satan and would have remained so forever had not God specially interposed. And so friends, when you read Ministry of Healing, page 451, we are told, through sin, the whole human organism is deranged, the mind is perverted, the imagination corrupted. Sin has degraded the faculties of the soul. Temptations from without find an answering cord within the heart, and the feet turn imperceptibly toward evil. Friends, remember like I mentioned that because of sin, we are born with this nature that tends towards evil. And so, you know, we love this kind of environment that is evil and our feet in most cases turn imperceptibly toward evil. But friends, disobedience is not in accordance with the nature which God gave to man in Eden. And amazingly, friends, Jesus became a man to restore to man the original mind. Are you following me? Jesus became a man that he might mediate between man and God. He closed this divinity with humanity. He associated with the human race that with his long human arm, he might encircle humanity and with his divine arm grasp the throne of divinity. Friends, when Christ reigns in the soul, there is purity, freedom from sin. The glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. Christ came to recreate the image of God in man. Friends, when you read Desire of Ages, page 478, Ellen White writes, It is the gospel of the grace of God alone that can uplift the soul. The contemplation of the love of God manifested in his son will stir the heart and arouse the powers of the soul as nothing else can. Christ came that he might recreate the image of God in man. And whosoever turns men away from Christ is turning them away from the source of true development. He is defrauding them of the hope and purpose and glory of life. And so friends, without Christ, just know you will be lost. Because Christ himself came to recreate the image of God in man. Friends, when you look at Christ's 
in intercourse or in conversation with Nicodemus. He actually unfolded the plan of salvation to Nicodemus. In the interview with Nicodemus, Jesus unfolded the plan of salvation and his mission to the world. In none of his subsequent discourses did he explain so fully, step by step, the work necessary to be done in the hearts of all who would inherit the kingdom of heaven. That is why he emphasized in John chapter 3 verse 7, marvel not at this, I say again, ye must be born again. Friends, that is the plan of salvation. But you may ask, what is the purpose of the plan of salvation? Number one, to reclaim us, not just forgive us, but to reclaim us. Friends, when you read Psalms 51 verse 10, listen to David, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Actually, again, he says in Psalms 103, verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Friends, Jesus will reclaim us by taking away our hatred, anger, impatience, bitterness, resentment, and all our bad attitudes. And so the first purpose of the plan of salvation is to reclaim us. Number two, to restore in man the image of his maker. Friends, when you read Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 743, listen carefully. By sin, the image of God in man has been murdered and well nigh obliterated. It is the work of the gospel to restore that which has been lost. So the purpose of salvation is to restore in man the image of his maker. Number three, to bring him back to the perfection in which he was first created. Are you following me? To bring him back to the perfection in which he was first created. With read Petrarchs and Prophets, page 595. Listen carefully. It was, the, it was to restore this that the plan of salvation was devised and a life of provision was granted to man. To bring him back to the perfection in which he was first created is the great object of life, the object that underlies every other. Friends, every single preacher should be directing people you know back to the perfection in which man was first created because christ himself says in matthew 5 48 be ye therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect we are told in the scriptures that in heaven there will there will be nothing you know that is having any form of defilement all will be perfect in heaven and so friends the purpose of the plan of salvation is to bring us to the original state that man was in before the fall. And so, by the way, this is also the goal of true education. Friends, the true object of education is to restore the image of God in the soul. When you read Petrarchs and Prophets, page 595, that is why we are told the Bible should be given the highest place in education. But unfortunately today, much of our educational system has been perverted. And so the philosophies of men, the writings of infidels, and all these sophistries of, you know, all these men are given the highest place. And the Bible is actually given a secondary place. But friends, true education should, you know, give the Bible the highest place. And education that fails to cultivate spirituality is disastrous. That one I have to tell you, friends, when you read Ellen White writes in, in this book, From Eternity, page 349, when education in human lines is pushed to such an extent that the love of God wanes in your heart, that prayer is neglected, and that there is a failure to cultivate spiritual attributes, it is wholly disastrous. And so if your education is actually, you know, bringing down your spirituality. Your communion with God has come down. You don't pray. You don't, you know, uh, study the word of God. You don't work for God, friends. You are heading towards a dead end. And so, Christ's righteousness and the plan of on redemption. We accept Christ's righteousness, not our own. And by the way, the title and fitness are found in the righteousness of Christ. And the power which Christ imparts enables man to resist. That is very important. And the only power that can create or perpetrate true peace is the power that lies in Jesus Christ, as is the grace of Christ. Friends, when you read Desire of Ages, page 305, the only power that can create or perpetrate true peace is the grace of Christ. 
When this is implanted in the heart, it will cast out the evil passions that cause strife and dissension. And so friends, without the grace of Christ, the sinner is, a, is in a hopeless condition. Nothing can be done for him. But through divine grace, supernatural power is imparted to the man and works in mind and heart and character. It is through the impartation of the grace of Christ that sin is discerned in its hateful nature and finally driven from the soul temple. It is through grace that we are brought into fellowship with Christ to be associated with him in the work of salvation. When you read Selected Messages, Book 2, page 366. And so, friends, we need Christ. In order for us to be revived, we need Christ. That is why he came and died for us. But today, many of us rarely talk about the righteousness of Christ. But, friends, we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. We need Christ's righteousness. Because without Christ's righteousness, Friends, we shall never and shall not inherit the kingdom of God. May God really bless you so much and let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, for teaching us your word. It's clear that we actually need your righteousness. May you cover us with your garment of righteousness and may you take away our filthy rags. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with others. Maranatha, Jesus is coming.